Last year, I published a video to the host of our YouTube channel outlining what I needed to do in order to fix my existing solar panel setup using the Ubiquiti Solar Point. At the time, it was December and the setup had gone offline due to rodents or probably some deer chewing some of the battery cables. The cables were left exposed on the outside of the pole and after two years of reliable performance, it served me pretty well. In that video, which is linked in the top right hand corner and in the description down below, I go over how I fixed the problem and the setup itself. Now, I often get questions saying what is the solar panel setup for and what it does. At the time, back in October 2020, I was working for a WISP and we used a lot of remote solar sites, used in remote locations to feed broadband rural communities. I had a rough idea about how the battery setup worked and since I was at home a lot more than usual, I set up my own setup, which consists of a Ubiquiti Solar Point, which has recently made a comeback, more on that later. A Renogy 100 watt panel, two 12 volt ledger batteries, and to get everything online, a Nanobeam 5AC, and then a G3 bullet and UAP AC mesh. The purpose of it was to learn how the solar setup worked, as well as see what roams around some of the fields we own. From time to time, we see foxes, deer, and sometimes birds of prey. This brings us to a few months ago. There are a number of things I was fairly unhappy with from the initial setup, namely the pole was too thin to mount the solar panel mount to, which in high winds has caused the panel to fall off completely. Secondly was the exposed cables and batteries. This brings us to the brand new setup. I chose a new site for it and at this time it will be a lighting pole concreted into the ground using proper bolts. This process was a massive learning curve and involved a number of hours on YouTube learning how this is done but I eventually got there in the end. The pole I chose was a 3 meter unit costing £280. Next I wanted a waterproof cabinet big enough to house the batteries and the solar point. I know the solar point is weatherproof but keeping everything inside the box removes the amount of cable that needs to be brought in and out of the hole in the box. The cabinet is from a local company here in the UK, IT Stockist. Link is in the description. This one is a 6U with a pole mounting kit costing £144. I use the same Halfords Leisure batteries as before, which seem to be performing pretty well. I do wish Ubiquiti releases an update to Solar Point at some point, as it only supports lead acid batteries, and lithium has much better absorption and they're a bit lighter too. First job was to dig the hole and pour in the concrete. I then mounted in bolts onto a wooden template I made and sat it in the concrete. A few days later it was ready to be removed. Next was to bolt the pole in place, which was easy enough to do on my own. Each bolt had two nuts and washers to do everything up. The whole pole was covered in a plastic wrap which had a messy white residue. Looking back, it's most likely powder coating. Next is to get the cabinet mounted to the pole, using some standard hose clamps which are rated for the weight. Next was the job of getting the solar panel itself mounted. First I removed the solar panel and mount from the old pole and then mounted the mount to the pole. The energy mount comes with some weird looking clips which have to be bolted in at an awkward angle, but in the end I got there. Next, mounting the actual panel to the pole. This particular one comes with fixed H4 leads. Later in the day I realised the extension cables I had for it were not long enough so in the meantime, between the longer cables arriving, I tucked the leads into the bracket facing downwards to avoid water getting in, which seemed to do the trick. Unfortunately, I did not have much footage of the rest of the process, but I got the batteries mounted inside the cabinet, got everything wired up and working with the solar point sitting on the shelf. It does look a complete mess at the moment, but I came back around a week later to tidy up a few things. Mainly the G3 bullet was reflecting its IR onto the side of the panel and causing a haze at night time. Some bad planning meant the amount of Ethernet cable I had poking up the top wasn't quite enough, so I had to do some work in the cabinet. First, I installed three Ubiquiti Ethernet surge devices, simply to extend the cables I had and run some indoor cable to go up to the solar point. I also tied up the cables as best I could and untangled all of the battery wires. I then was able to move the G3 bullet up on the pole and avoid the solar panel with a small section still visible as birds like to land on it. And there we have it. What you see is the final product. With the black flex trunking to protect everything from the elements, I used hose clamps to keep it all in check. It's like an unwieldy vacuum hose at times. We have the solar point, G3 bullet and UAP AC mesh. The G3 bullet is set to only turn off when the voltage gets too low. The AC mesh is only used manually whenever we need it. Next, we'll take a look at the GUI and see what it does. We're now going to look at the solar point GUI. This is running solar point version 2.0.0, uh, beta 3. So if you look on the community there, uh, you can see there's a beta 1 there, beta 2. And this is uh, bringing a brand new design to it. So if you look at beta 2 as well. So we've got a improved forecast logic. The device time is set from RTC. Uh, some more detailed forecast messages. And if you look at beta 1 as well, uh, there's a new forecast provider. There's some new uh, EULA stuff. And then it's got a web interface improvements and also a login page improvement. So the login page here looks very different to what it used to look like before. So if we log into the solar point now, this looks fairly familiar. Uh, it's been good that they fixed the forecast because this has been broken for about a year so far. So this used to be the last 24 hours, it's the last 48 hours now. So we can jump into the week and hover over and see how much energy has been discharged, how much has been charged, what the voltage was sort of over the day. Uh, you can see the past few days, well, Saturday, it didn't charge at all for me. 
because uh, it's barely sunny at all, so it used to use a lot of energy there. Uh, but today so far it's been relatively bright, so we've got 200 watt hours charged and then discharged 25.9 watt hours, and the same on Friday, so we got we charge more than we use, which is good. This has been fixed, though there was a bug um, on the one dot release train for solar point that if you use the management vlan which is what i'm doing the device details here will be not working that wouldn't wouldn't show anything so i reported a bug to uh, ubiquity and then they fixed it in 2.0 uh we've got low sun activity so at the moment it's not very bright we're charging at 4.8 watts it's actually discharging because it's using more energy than it's charging so it's discharging very slowly and there's also some information here about what it thinks that it's going to do so obviously we're coming into the winter time now uh, you're going to get less sun than you would do before. Uh, we've got the new Ubixi logo up there, Stellar Point, and then the version. And if we jump into settings, we've got battery settings. Uh, so you put the battery name when it was installed. This was about three years ago for me. Uh, charging target. So you can choose between 27.4 all the way up to 30 volts. Uh, the capacity of the battery. So I've got two batteries, 12 volts each, and then the 70 amp hours. So once you uh, put the batteries together to become 24 volts, you do lose one of the batteries, their capacity. So that's to be expected. We've got some shutdown voltages here, so um, you can specify what ports on the solar point it shuts the voltage down at, and then you've got the 100 watt panel there. So for the output, I've got my nano beam, I've got the G3, and then UAP HD mesh, and I've got the uh, priority for the G3 set to low, so whenever the battery gets so low, that's to turn stuff off, it turns the camera off first, and it keeps the powered up link on first, which is good, um, so it means I can get stats and things onto USP. i got the wireless radio, so this is just for managing the device, really, so I've got that turned off. Uh, network settings and management VLAN IP address as well. System, connect to your ISP, and then you can upgrade the software from this page as well. And we've got a map as well. That map will show you where the solar point is located currently. So if once you drag drag it onto a different location, the coordinates will go onto the main screen here. So if you are after a solar point, they are currently out of stock. They have been for about two or three years at this point. So the solar switch is its indoor cousin. It's exactly the same device, uh, just indoor rated, and then the solar point as well. So it retails for just over 200 euros and about $199 in the US, um, but it, this hasn't been refreshed. I'm hoping the renewed interest in the solar point and the solar switch means that Ubiquiti will come up with a, a new version of the solar point, as I mentioned in the video. A good one that supports lithium would be quite handy because they are a lot lighter and they do have a lot more absorption. Um, obviously, lead acid and gel batteries have not much absorption compared to lithium, so be quite good. So that's been a look at the Ubiquiti solar point and the setup I did over the last few months. If you want to learn more about Hostify, have a look at Hostify.com. We do hosting for Unify, UISP, and TP-Link Armada. You can contact us for consulting with Hostify Pro. Check out the website, Hostify.com forward slash pro, and get help from an expert today. If you've got any questions about Unify, UISP, or TP-Link Armada, let our support team know, support at Hostify.com, and they'll be sure to help you out. Thank you for watching this video. My name's Alex, and we'll see you again next time.